Yo, what's up, everybody that's joining in? Please let me know if you can hear me okay. I'm always skeptical on these live streams. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining today. Sorry, it's been a little bit since we did this. I've... Uh, had some things going on. So um, happy Saturday to everybody. Hope you're safe out there in the world. Hope you're observing your social distancing and you're washing your hands and wearing your mask and all that fun stuff. My name's Chris, Crashbox Customs. Today we're going to take a look at this piece we're working on, this um, mythic piece. It's going to be a production piece, so we will be offering this um, for sale in the near future. So this is the prototype. So I wanted to talk a little about it, and we're going to do some airbrush basics today with a very reasonably priced airbrush. So we got a... Uh, Fury Orc here. We'll move him out of the way. You don't want to get any paint on this fella, right? Unless you're painting him, and that's not what we do here. You know, KJ Smith, you seem like the kind of guy that would need a dio. We can talk about that in the near future. So let's talk about this piece here. Um, of course, we did the Mythic Hall, which was a huge piece, um, and uh, we've been wanting to do something smaller, something more uh, reasonably priced, and, and something you could build, you know, build out a, a great big thing if you wanted to. And so that's what this is. Um, you know, if you wanted to buy 28 of these and line them up by uh, by each other, you could, um, or if you just need one, that's fine. Hey, Tom, how are you? Good to see you. So let's take a look at what we got going on here. Um, most of this isn't isn't glued together yet because I'm going to paint it before I glue it together. Um, but we'll take it apart here. And we'll start with the floor. So all this was cut out with my uh, Inventable X car. Um, I designed this floor. And uh, this is PVC. Very dirty PVC. But this is a piece of... Um, quarter inch PVC sheeting. I designed this uh, tile pattern, kind of literally just randomly uh, drew squares and, and rectangles, uh, lined it all out. And this was actually painted with um, spray paint. Uh, the weather's actually been decent uh, the past couple of days. It's a little windy, but so this was painted with, uh, with 
rust-oleum texture paint first and then some grays and tans and some more texture paint um, for the floor. I like using this stuff for the floor because it's so thin. It's not going to take up a lot of room. And um, obviously, you know, having a big thick piece of foam for the base works absolutely fine. But this actually saves you some space. Um, even if you're, you know, using it for a photo setup or whatever, it's just that less space that, uh, that you'll have to, that you'll have to deal with. So, um, there's your floor piece and let's talk about the back piece here. So this would be the very back. So we got the, uh, the cutout here, uh, recessed for the window and the window, this is the same window. I actually just had this. When I did the Mythic Hall, I cut too many windows. Well, truth be told, I cut them out, and then I lost two of them in my shop somehow, and I found them after we were done. So I had these windows, and I've actually I've hit this with um with a Rust-Oleum hammered paint. I don't know if you guys are, are, are familiar with that. Uh, what's up, Harvey underscore underscore Dent? Uh, hammered kind of gives it, I don't know if you can see the little texture that's in it there. Um, yeah, there we go. So I'll end up hitting this with a couple different washes and, and uh, dry brushes, mostly white dry brush, to uh, to add some more depth to it. But that sits right in here. I can actually show you how it goes in. Snug as a bug in a rug. So that just sits right in there nice and clean. And I will say, figuring out this size to fit in this hole, and this hole size, was was a very long process. So um, I did design a second window. I haven't cut it yet. Um, it's a similar design. It is a little different, but I did use the exact same size because I didn't want to spend hours designing a new um, a new hole there. So this piece will get mounted here. Uh, this is actually two pieces here. Uh, the back is just literally a spacer piece glued to um, to the front. And I used, um, what glue did I, I think I used, I used two glues for this so far. I used the Hot Wire Foam Factory Styro Goo, which I really like and I am about out of. I need to order some more. I think I said that last time. And then based on someone's suggestion, another Dio builder. I'm sorry. I can't remember who. Uh, I tried this Gorilla uh, Clear. It's a little thinner than I was expecting it to be. Um, maybe I need to give it another try. Uh, maybe a different application. But it was a little runny for my tastes. Um, but it got the job done ultimately. So... Uh, this is uh, all cut out with the X carve. I added this notch at the top here, and uh, and the, the notch here as well, just to give it a little bit of a little bit of flair, I suppose. And um, everything has been sanded and filled, and that's just filled with um, where's it at? Just the dry deck spackle, the pink stuff that I use for all sorts of stuff. Use it for uh, mortar and the, the bricks and whatnot as well. Um, and all these edges have been kind of radius down um, just with um, with sandpaper. And, and I'll show you something I've recently bought that I really like. I think I got them on Amazon. They're these sanding sticks, just little thin pieces of sandpaper. Hey, Alex, what's up? Um, they come in they're kind of random packed, but like, this is a pretty fine grit one here. I'd say this is maybe like a, an 800 grit or so. And this red one here is, I don't know, it might be like a 180 or something. It's really aggressive, but I use these to radius some of these edges out. Um, you can't super duper tell it's there, but it just kind of takes the, the sharpness off of it from the machine. Um, and then I think the coolest piece of this so far is the uh, the columns that I built? So got a nice curve in there. So I designed these in Easel, which is the free software that Inventables provides. 
Uh, and these are two pieces glued together. So there's one piece. Because uh, guess what? I forgot to flip it when I cut them. So I have an extra piece. Uh, so two of these glued together. And then, um, you know, sanded to fill and everything to knock the, uh, the center off. And I already saw these edges down as well. <laughs> the sound, uh, the, the sound kills you for sanding. Well, you would not have liked being in my workshop yesterday because I, uh, I sanded a lot of foam. So yeah, so this is going to be uh, available for purchase um, very soon. We'll be we putting up an order for that uh, piece. It should be pretty reasonably priced. And like I said, if, if you want to do a whole run, you know, if you want to build your own hallway of these. Uh, to be an opportunity for you to do that, or if you just want one or two, and, and we may, if this is successful, may offer uh, complementary pieces, uh, doorways and whatnot, uh, to go with it. And the floors are nice because they'll you can tile them together and make it as as big as you want. So um, the next step here is to put down some paint, uh, the some base coat paint here. I'm going to use my airbrush today. So um, I have uh, lots of airbrushes and none of, them, none of them wanted to work for me today. So what we're going to use is a Harbor Freight airbrush, um, the central pneumatic brand that everybody knows and loves. See right there, the Deluxe airbrush kit. Um, sorry about the, I won't sand foam unless I want to torture you, KJ. I won't sand foam directly. So we're going to use the, uh, the Harbor Freight airbrush here. Nothing fancy about it. This is a bottom, a bottom fee airbrush, which means you put your paint in these, these little jars instead of, uh, the cup on top. Which for what we're doing today is going to be a lot of just painting one color. Um, it works great. Uh, I, my other, my, my Awada airbrush, uh, somebody, mostly me, didn't clean it last time very well. So it is currently soaking in a solution to loosen up the gunk. So clean your airbrushes, kids. That's the lesson for the day. All right. So. Let's talk about paint. I mentioned it before. I don't use fancy paint. I don't. I think I have two or three Citadel paints. Um, I do have some testers like airbrush paint that I've probably got on clearance somewhere. Um, but we're going to be using good old Apple Barrel um, Apple Barrel Black. So before uh, before the lockdown came, I went and stocked up on black paint and several other colors. Because I knew, uh, you know, maybe an opportunity to not have them in the future. So I went ahead and grabbed as much as I could. We are going to use, uh, we're going to cut it with water. And we're also going to cut it with um, alcohol. Which this stuff's worth a fortune right now. But there's not a lot left in here. So I'm just going to mix a little alcohol. And what that does is it dries quickly. So it just leaves the paint behind. So it actually speeds up your process a bit. Um, this is another neat little tool. It's a paint blender. I want to say it's maybe $12 on Amazon. I do know they come in black, but, um, you know, I like to buy them in white. So there you go. Uh, let's see here. So we're going to mix up black paint. The one thing I will tell you when using this paint is be careful not to get big clumps of paint um, in your mixing cup because these things do clog up, especially up here around the top. So it's always a good idea to, to clean that off before you get started just to make sure you don't accidentally drop anything in there. Because when you clog an airbrush up, it's, it's not fun. If you guys have any questions about what I'm doing or anything uh, diorama wise, please feel free to drop that in the chat. Uh, I don't really have a good formula for mixing paint. Um, I just kind of eyeball it. I'm sure somebody somewhere has a nice um, 
calculation for, for how to mix this kind of paint. Um, but I'm not that guy. So we're just, uh, I just kind of eyeball it about 50, 50 paint versus water. Um, this paint isn't very old. I think I opened it this week. So, uh, we're just going to fill one of these cups up. Oh, hi. Say hi, Kelly. Hello. My wife, Kelly's in the room. What do you want? Trash can. Oh, that's all you want from me is my trash can. Kelly's been making masks today. Not Lucha Libre masks, but like allowing us to go outside masks because you can't find them. So um, she's, we used our, our, our vinyl cutter, which is a cricket machine uh, to cut some fabric. And um, she's actually going to try, we have a sublimation printer. I'm not going to try to explain that, <laughs> but we're going to try, she's going to try to print some on the sublimation onto the material we're using. So, so maybe we can make some designs and stuff uh, on the masks. So we'll maybe show that on the, on the uh, social medias. So, all right, let me get back to pouring the paint here. All right. So that's, that's where we're going to start. Not a ton of paint in there, but a decent amount. I'm going to put some of the alcohol. It is not moonshine, contrary to popular belief. And in reality, if we were not in the situation we're in, I would probably fully use alcohol. Didn't we use straight alcohol for that hallway? Yeah. So the mythic hallway, the entire base coat, front and back, side to side, was all done just with isopropyl alcohol. And it dried super quick. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was, it came out very well. Uh, but situation we're in, we don't have that. So I'm just going to, this is just tap water. Mix it up. And using our mixing tool, start mixing it all together. All right, so let's take a look here um, at the viscosity, I guess. So it's leaving it on the side, and it's not very thick. So I think we're going to go with this to start with. And if you put it in the gun and it's too thick, pour it back out and add some more, uh, some more liquid to it, some more uh, dilution. So once again, we're using a bottom feeder. I'm talking about you, Transformers collectors. Just kidding. Um, going to fill this jar with the paint. Hopefully not make a mess. We'll just put a little bit in there to start. Just to see how the gun's going to work for us. And let's see. We will do this back piece to start. So I'll move the rest of this out of the way. If you airbrush, the best thing I found, especially if you're airbrushing foam, the best thing I've found to help you hold stuff up, these are from the Dollar Tree. They're to uh, paper towel holders. Um, I actually have a heavier one, but that's actually my rigged up um, tripod right now for the camera. So, see, that way you can get to the whole thing. All right, and this piece of cardboard is just a box. Some lucky person will probably get a diorama shipped to them um, in a box covered with paint, because that's just how we're going to do it. All right, let me move my mixing supplies over here, and hopefully I will knock them over. So, to load the... Um, To load the um, gun, you literally just put the jar on there. So we'll just test it out on the cardboard real quick. There we go. Looks like we had some water on the line. 
And you guys can't see that. Let me turn the camera down a little bit. There we go. The compressor will kick on from time to time. Um, I am going to increase the pressure a bit. Because we're not doing any fine detail work. We're literally just knocking the knocking it down. I am going to do one more thing before we go here. I did sand this piece, which I always try to sand stuff before I paint foam because it um, sometimes doesn't adhere as well on that factory finish. Yeah, and you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, a lot of pink's coming off there. So just wipe it off with this shop towel back while we're at it. It really wouldn't hurt anything if you left it there, but might not have the best adhesion. So KJ, I shipped you a, ba a box of cardboard nets. That is, we sometimes, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, you can bid on stuff on Goodwill's website and they ship it to you. So my wife has decided to start a cookie jar collection and that's how they shipped it was that stuff. It, I looked into it. it. It's a machine that basically shreds cardboard boxes into that packing material. I get a lot of boxes. So I'm like, well, that'd be a great thing to have around the house, except it's like $2,500 for the machine on the low end. So, all right. So, well, that didn't work very well. Well, the jar fell out, so we're off to a, a wonderful start here. Let's try that again. There we go. Yeah, might have to hold the jar. All right. So, we're good to go. Okay, so we're going to adjust the needle a little bit. If you pull the needle back a little, it opens up the um, the amount of paint that's going to come through because we don't need a we don't need a super fine amount um, to come out for what we're doing. And I would suggest wearing gloves if they weren't such a hot commodity uh, because I'm making a mess of myself. So let's see here. There we go. So that's going to put out some more paint. Let's get this back a little bit. This doesn't have to be like a hundred percent great coverage because it's going to have a bunch of other layers on top of it. And actually this didn't even all need to be painted because it's going to have stuff glued to the top of it. So that little bitty amount of paint I put in there has done that much coverage already. No, I'm not getting into the net game. I don't even know what that means.
All right. We're going to add some more paint to this. I'm going to give the paint another stir just while we're here. Just to make sure it's good mixed up. Hopefully that compressor is not too terribly loud on the microphone. Necessary evil, I suppose. It is a fancy stir stick. I actually use it for my coffee also to make sure you rinse it off between. Just kidding. So I pulled the needle back a little bit more so we can get done today. All right, so where we started, that's dry already. That's how quick it goes. Can't hear the compressor, that's awesome. It is a quiet little unit, um, so that's good, you can't hear it. Uh, Matt, I wish I had some White Claw, I don't. I have some LaCroix I'm drinking, which is like, White Claw's Christian cousin maybe? acrylic paint so I don't have any ventilation going in here um, which a lot of the time I do but then I run a fan and that gets loud so shame on me I guess no bueno in the sublo okay can't sublimate that's all right okay All right, so there's our base coat here. I'm not gonna paint the sides yet because I'm gonna paint the sides once um, all the sides are on, but this will be dry momentarily. Once again, it doesn't have to be a solid black coat. Um, there's no nooks and crannies really on this. Uh, actually, I'm gonna put a little bit more paint right here. There's no nooks and crannies like there is on a, like brickwork. So, Obviously on brickwork, you want to get a little bit uh, he heavy, heavier coat. All right. So we'll stick this to the side and grab another piece, but that's going to do that one. Oh, it smells awful. Oh, Jesus. The smell of burning human flesh. All right, so let's uh, let's paint our archway. We're gonna we're gonna tackle it this way to start. Front. 
things are hot. The poly melted on the heat press, scraped it off, and thought it was cool, and my hand bumped it, and then the not cool poly plastic sucked my hand. Oh, that's awful. I've had that happen before. Yeah, awesome. So my wife just had a piece of <laughs> melting uh, polyurethane stick to her hand. Fun times. I once had that happen at scout camp. Someone threw a flaming piece of plastic on my leg. I whooped their ass. But that's all right. Actually, Tyler, I haven't come far at all. I use rattle cans all the time. Uh, I use rattle cans on this project, actually. You can't rattle can foam very well, so I don't. Uh, do I like the siphon brush? I, it's fine for things like this. Um, if you're going to be doing any detail work, I recommend a top load. Um, but once again, this is a super cheap unit from, from, from Harbor Freight that does i mean you could get by with this just fine this will do a lot of fine work but it's just to me cumbersome to have to deal with the the jar Check our paint level here. I think we might be getting a little low. Yeah. Let's see something here. Yeah. Unplug that light. I think you guys can see better. And I can see what I'm doing a little bit. Anybody working on anything fun today? Or are we all just being couch potatoes? Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to couch potato tonight and watch night one of WrestleMania, which is a strange thing to say. I think I got a clog. See if we can get this done. Yeah, definitely got something bad going on here. Okay, so this one is, uh, yeah, almost dry already. Once again, I'm not going to do the sides and everything yet till, uh, till I glue everything together. But put this one over here, too.
this is the fun part of the airbrush, figuring out why the damn thing is clogged up. And it could be in this line right here. One way to check it is to blow air through it, which can potentially make a mess, but we've got all day here. Oh, yeah. Big old nasty. Big old nasty looking clog. So it's like our line was clogged coming out. And that happens using this paint. I think it happens using pretty much any paint. It's like everybody's doing a little bit of painting today, whether it's model painting or kitchen painting. Saber sanding. Need to adjust my needle again. There we go. We're in business. All right, so we got our two uh, our two columns here. Yeah, the paper towel rack thing is really handy. If you're doing something like if you're if you're painting something that you've got magnets in, it works really great because you just stick it on there and it it's like you know it magnetizes to it, obviously, because it's metal. All right, I'm gonna lay this one down and paint it just because of the way it's made. I'll be able to paint three sides, the two sides at least, at a time. And hopefully it doesn't wander away on me. <laughs> well, I found the downfall of this kind of brush. See, that's, that's so dry already on the other side, I can just flip it over and paint it. Matt, I've got a, the compressor I use is a Z-E-N-Y Zenny compressor off of, um, I think I saw off of Amazon for like 50 bucks. It's the exact same components that the Badger brand is, except Badger comes with a metal case over the top of it, and this is just I'll send you a picture. It's just the compressor. Um, so all in all, this airbrush setup I've got here is like less than a hundred bucks um, that I'm using today. Now I've got I've got some higher end stuff, but um, for this, there we go. It's about a hundred bucks. I 
I need a third hand today. Actually, I have a third hand. I'll use my one, two, three blocks. I love these things. I use them for all sorts of stuff. They're absolutely filthy at the moment. But they'll work good for this. And I don't mind if I get them dirty. Got all, These are on Amazon, too, for uh, maybe 20 bucks for four of them. I'm going to hit this from this direction real quick. And there's no reason to do the back because it's, um, it's going to get glued in. So nobody's going to see it ever. All right, we'll call that one done. We got us another clog. Fun stuff. All right, one more side. We are done with the base coats.
Okay. Base coat is done. All right, we can come back to our first uh, our first piece we did, and it's completely dry already. Um, it hadn't been hadn't been too terribly long, probably 15, 20 minutes. Uh, it's completely uh, completely dry there. So um, that's basics of this airbrush. Um, it does the job. It's not the best airbrush on the market by any means. But it definitely, um, definitely will speed up your process between, um, you know, layering here, uh, dry time, using some uh, some alcohol or all alcohol if, if you have it, and that's isopropyl alcohol. I mean, I guess you could use Everclear if that was what you were into, um, but not necessary by any means. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna mix up some gray now. And keeping in mind for this piece, uh, this one's still a little wet, but we really only need to paint that. We don't need to paint the whole thing. So basically the border around the sides doesn't need to be painted. So we're going to do basically the same thing. Um, and just to show you, like, all that black we mixed up, it's there's that much of it left. So maybe half of it we used, not counting what's in this, uh, in this cup still. So I've got another bottle here. Um, and this is actually the bottle at the machine that came with the, the airbrush. Um, I don't know if I can get this label off or not. I haven't tried. I'll we'll just leave it on there. Um, Yeah, brand new bottle here. Um, we're gonna mix up some gray the same way we did. Uh, and we're going to use, which one? Let's use pewter gray. So this is pewter gray. Come on. There we go. Good old apple barrel. So we're gonna shake it up pretty good. Like that technique, huh? All right, this one's got all sorts of crusties in here. I have in the past, I don't think I have any right now, used paint filters um, to avoid clogs. But I will just wipe the top of this off. And we'll take our chances. Actually, I'm going to forego the lid and just pour the paint straight in. Oh, look at that big old nasty glob there. Yeah. So I saved us some trouble there by catching that. Best bet is to use brand new paint when you can. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any brand new paint of this color. And uh, don't know if I can get any brand new paint of this color. So we're just going to take our chances. So I didn't put a lot in there. Just about to there. So same process. I'm going to add some alcohol. And some water. A lot of the times, if there is a clog or anything, some big old nastiness in here, your mixer will pull it up. It looks like we're good. So, about the same viscosity that we did um, earlier.
Uh, Tyler, no. I mean, the, the black really acts as the primer. So um, it lays down a base coat. I mean, you can go straight to the foam with whatever color you want. Uh, it's just, you know, hard to, to get that pink color to cooperate. What's up, EE -E Prime? Yeah, one, two, three blocks. Man, I, I don't remember where I found these things. Somebody talked about them, but I use these things every day for something, whether it's a weight to hold something down or making corners square four different ways. They're great. They're great. I'm a, by no means a machinist. I have worked around machinists. My dad's a pretty decent machinist. All right, so we're going to pour our um, gray paint into our bottle here. Looks like we're going to be pretty good. I do use a, uh, this is a mix of water and um Mineral spirits is what I use to clean my, my stuff with. Um, so I'm just going to kind of force feed some um, of that through my gun by squeezing it until it runs clear. You guys can't see what I'm doing, but that's what I did. Yeah, just to get the... If I was doing a drastic color swap, like if I was going to orange or... Um, you know, white or something, I would definitely do a full clean, but um, I don't think it's necessary with, um, you know, basically just swapping to a lighter shade of the same color, so. All right. So let's snap our uh, next bottle in. Looks like this one's actually going to stay in there without me having to hold it. So there's a color we're, we're going to get. And away we go. Yeah, I need to push the needle in a little bit. I'm getting some splatter there. So I'm just going to push the needle in a little bit on this gun. Once again, or I'll say it for the first time if I didn't, I am not an expert with an airbrush. I am probably <laughs> not even really good at it. Um, but I'm just showing you how I use the tool. Just kind of want to take a peek here at where we need to be. Yeah, not too terribly much more there.
So that gets us uh, gets us our coverage for that piece. There may be some in the um, look next to the cooler. There may be some that's just not cold yet. All right, so we're going to do the inside of here first. I'm glad this is relaxing for you, young Daniel. Anything I can do to help. It's amazing what a little color can do. I'm going to check my paint level here, see where we're at, time for some paint. Fill her up. And I didn't even really need to paint these sides either because the columns are getting attached here, but there we are.
helpful. The stone look alike paint. Uh, yeah, I have some spray paint that's like a stone um, paint, if that's what you're talking about. Tyler, I'm not sure. Um, I've got a I've got a concrete one too. This this is kind of that effect. This is this was done with spray paint. Um, you see the variations in the colors and textures. This is not by far the, the end of the paint for this. So there'll be lots of different layers um, that go on the finished product. stretch. Got a little bit of paint left here. Just finish this off.
boy, we're getting down to the uh, the very end of this paint, and uh, really don't want to mix any more up, but I might be able to pull it out. Come on. All right. Just enough. Probably could get a little bit more on this side. That dog will hunt. All right. take a look at our progress today. <laughs> there we go. All right, these are still a little wet. Yeah, that's coming along nicely. All right, so uh, I got a bunch of boring stuff to do. I got to glue some stuff together and whatnot. Um, I'll try to come back tomorrow and, uh, show you guys some, uh, some, some techniques to do some, uh, some weathering and whatnot on this piece to take it to the next level. So, uh, thanks everybody for joining today. Make sure you follow us on social media, Crashbox Customs on, um, Facebook, Instagram, um, I guess Twitter, if that's the thing you do, um, give us a like on this video and share it if uh, you think it was worthwhile. If you have any questions about anything in the video, just leave it in the comments or hit me up on social media, Crashbox Customs. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening and we will see you later. Peace out.